I thought it's focused. Oh, it's focused? Okay. Do you, does she get the plant right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. in the frame. My name is Suhail Ben Sliman. I am a father uh, of a nine-year-old son, Omar. Uh, I am also a criminalized and illegalized migrant uh, who came to Canada at the age of 16. I uh, encountered the carceral state at a very young age, which led me to a final incarceration of uh, almost five years. Since I got out of prison in March 2018, I have been involved in uh, abolitionist organizing, prisoners' rights organizing, and migrant justice organizing. Uh, when I was released, I was released from the penitentiary on parole. Uh, and also from immigration detention on immigration bail because I am currently facing deportation uh, to Morocco. Um, when I was released, uh, I was released under conditions from uh, Canada Parole Board and also released under conditions from uh, Immigration Canada. The immigration conditions were I am not allowed to work and I am not allowed to go to school. There is this old saying that we always say is uh, do the crime, do the time. Mm -hmm. So people who are locked up, who are criminalized, say this. Do the crime, do the time. What does that mean? Do the crime means that you believe that there is certain actions that are inherently quote-unquote criminal. Mm -hmm. You become someone who see yourself as abnormal, as pathological, as uh, deviant, so, therefore, you think that if you engage in behavior X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. you should be punished. And do the crime, do the time. You know, do the crime, do the time. So that's your belief. So you believe that you're trying to do something, maybe you're trying to evade the, the authorities while doing it, like, for example, selling drugs, and you... You, don't, you think that if you get caught, you have to be punished. So therefore, there's no resistance. You see yourself as, as a criminal. Therefore, you become acceptance to some forms of dehumanization, of punishment. And, uh, and you don't resist it. You know, you're like, anyways, this is my fate. This is what I deserve. There were other prisoners who would say things like, well, you know what, like, fuck the system, you know, like, we all didn't like the system. However, some people would say things that are pretty much very, very critical of the carceral state, like, um, I'm selling drugs, why should I be punished for that when pharmaceutical companies are making multi, you know, multi-billion dollars a year from the sale uh, and the trade of drugs because their sale and their trade was legitimized by the state and other factors mm -hmm. and we, we were punished for doing the same thing you know so for selling drugs and uh, some folks will hold very very critical uh, you know cr critical ideas about, about the state about criminalization uh, some people thought of the jail as as not being a solution. We all felt it. 
we all felt that it is not a solution. Mm -hmm. However, uh, some people verbalize those things. And often, people who hold those discourses become dismissed by their, their, own, their own peers uh, because of those internalized mm -hmm. ideas, right? We didn't resist much. And the other reason why we didn't resist is cost-benefit calculations. And we were at risk of violence every day. Uh, withholding medication, withholding food, uh, pushing you, uh, 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 forcing you into, into segregation or solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. uh, for doing those self-advocacy moves, right? So one day uh, the guards came with their, uh, their shields and uh, paramilitary equipment, mm -hmm. you know, so like anti-riot like, so anti -riot. like anti -riot, SWAT kind of, of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of clothes, right? So one time they came in for a search and they searched the whole range and uh, in order to search us they stripped us naked, first of all uh, after stripping us naked obviously they make you like turn around, bend over mm -hmm. spread your cheeks and we were forced to wait outside mm -hmm. while they search our cells, our units. And when we were forced to go outside, it was in the yard, and the yard is concrete floors. And we were forced to go on our knees and face the fence with our hand, hands tied behind our backs. And uh, it was very cold. We were forced to stay there for hours. And when we came in, I remember uh, signing or being forced to sign a, a form saying that after the search, I am healthy, I have nothing you know, to, to complain about, and I won't sue the jail. So we were, able, we were forced to sign that, and one of the brothers, uh, who was a Sudanese man from Ottawa, uh, refused to sign the form. He's like, I'm not signing the form. Because when we returned back to our cells, everything was chaotic. Uh, Muslim people's prayer mats were on the floor. Some of their pages from their Quran were ripped and thrown in the toilet. And it was just like an outright dehumanizing and, and very violent event. So guards went in his cell and beat him up so bad we were locked up in our cells and we hear the man screaming for his life uh, and then they dragged him out of the cell after they beat him really good and later on we discover his cell full of blood from on the floors, on the walls As someone who has seen far too many people suffer and die at the hands of the carceral state, my journey towards abolitionism was perhaps inevitable. My abolitionist thinking began to develop from the time I came into contact with systems of oppression which imbricated and pressed their mighty weight on my shoulders that I continue to bear. I am at war with the carceral state in response to the violence of racial capitalism which feeds on the blood and pains of prisoners, extracting time from life of human beings in an ongoing effort to keep money on the move. Although I am wounded and my body and soul are bleeding, organizing against the carceral beast allows me to acquire knowledge that one can only gather by looking at its entrails. Personal encounters with the carceral oppression are the foundation of my transformation from a docile body into abolitionist thought and praxis. This issue is a matter of life and death.